where we come up the creek on the side of there and we're heading along this long ridge which ultimately I believe will lead us upstream to Pueblo Canyon. Sure. Well, we are now looking up Devil's Chasm to the left here, which probably is really the one that extends over to the left more, but has two or three drainages there behind this peak, and then Cold Springs is the one against the far cliff. You can see that it has a commanding view of the Cherry Creek drainage. And there they are. Now on the bench below Pueblo Canyon and Cold Springs Canyon, looking across the way to, I think, Bronco Canyon, upstream up Cherry Creek in that direction. Here are the cliffs of Pueblo Canyon with possibly some ruins right up in there. Andy said he saw yesterday had my eyesight isn't good enough. And then from Pueblo Canyon there's a ridge and Cold Spring Canyon runs off in that direction. On the bench at the split of the trail between Cold Springs and Pueblo Canyon. This is Cold Springs in this direction with Pueblo behind us and this is the view looking down Cherry Creek and then across to Bronco Canyon where there's some cliff dwellings right over I believe at the base of this cliff, which you can see in the afternoon sun, but not now. But pretty impressive vantage point. I mean, you don't see through here what you're getting. We're looking at Pueblo Canyon here, and Jamie was just pointing out that she sees some ruins along the baseline of this cliff that she hasn't seen before. These aren't them. They're over to the left a little further, but possibly some walls there, but definitely some walls, we think, right there. But then as we pull back and there are definitely this is one of the ruins that we're going to. And here. How come you do that? 
your eyes are the same, aren't they? Oh, you can see the whole room is just eroded away. Down there where you were talking about, yeah. Jamie? Yeah, and where we saw those other two walls, those are walls. Those are walls? Mm -hmm. So that looks like that was probably ten or more rooms. Because those are pretty wide spread, right? So Jamie says those are walls there and over here. You know, Andy, I don't, I would think that the elevation gain from that ruin up to the top of the you know, Pueblo Canyon, so we're heading about halfway up the canyon, and here's a site on the south side of the canyon, north face. It's a little odd. And we'll be there in a minute. Andy, is this where the mining activity is? I don't the shaft to your see left it. Oh, I see. Here are the sites that I just mentioned on the north facing slope. And then as you look across the canyon, you can see Pueblo's here. Here. And I suspect further along this cliff, I know, I don't know if that's one there or not, I think it is. I think you can see a room right there. Ruins on the north facing slope, you can see it's Probably four or maybe five rooms, you don't know yet. This wall is gone here, possibly from a natural rock fall, perhaps vandalism. Plastered walls with lintels. Walls butted. Plaster weathered away, T doorways. This I suspect is an add on here. You can see this wall has totally fallen out. The lintels that Branch mentioned, you can see the holes for the roof beams. Perhaps, that's a little low. This room looks like it burned. That was actually a doorway closed up for a window, it looks like. Tala slope is built up with a rock retaining wall, whether that was prehistoric. It looks 
a bit different. I kind of think this may have been a historic addition. You can see the difference in the masonry. Technique from there to there, difference in rock. I was just looking at it, come back, and here we can see some rooms. This is a historic mine shaft right here that they put right through this ruin, which looks like it was perhaps two stories or four or five, six rooms, something. With looking out at the canyon from the south facing slope, and you can see over here with the first main ruin. And we can see over there the other ruin that we were just at. And we can also look back up canyon and can't quite see the waterfall, just just around the bend. Hello. You can see that. Well, I wonder if this burned or if this is just smoke. Because see, this wall isn't. Well, this beam is burned. Yeah, and that's a serious burn on the beam. You're not camouflaged. He ain't shy, is he? Probably hadn't seen anything as big as us that's this alive. I mean, that is alive. Look at the fingerprints down there. That's the second room. A little, uh... Does this look like pot hunting activity in here to you? walls collapsed. These beams are totally gone. There's a two-story room. <clears throat> now up at Broken Flute Cave, if that's a storage room, and maybe it was a habitation room, but the, the storage bins were, <coughs> well, they might have been pack rat things too, but they'd be 12 inches full of corn cobs. It was pretty amazing. It sounds like that's original. Yeah, I think so. But then some of them you could see were definitely, you know, there was a footprint. See that one right between your. Mm -hmm. That looks like it's not this weekend. Last weekend, no. My Rich, footprint right there. Coming this way. This one. See this that's little me. band. That's me. Right. Did you stepped over here? I must have just been already down here. No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, now I'm getting the full effect here. 
God, those walls are just butted right up. Well, I guess in a later edition. You can see that wall is separating. Inside one of the rooms, this is still part of that first major ruin we met. It's probably about 20 rooms or so. Um, several of them have these little niches built back up into the back that I suspect were storerooms. The size of these rooms is very large compared to other um, cliff dwellings that I've seen. This is about 16, 18 feet across. Um, in that direction, and probably about 14 feet this way, was um, two-story. You can see the roof beam sockets here, and then on the other side, the wall fell over at the roof beam level, it appears. It went up another story. Quite a large room. And now we're looking into a similar room on the other side with another niche. I suspect from storage. Central roof beam. You can see the jointed walls. Here you can see wall construction with what appears to be a much thicker first story wall and then um, a, perhaps a rubble fell. Standing in front of that adjacent room, looking to the east again with another four room, six room block, two stories, probably rooms behind, I suspect. Look at the difference in masonry here and there. I wonder if this was a repair or something. It looks like someone may have shored that wall up for preservation. Went to a little shot and whoops, we see that this is going to go soon, especially as people carelessly walk through here and bang their head on that rock. Boy, this doorway with the lintel has turned into an arch. It won't be there long. But there's a, I would guess, what, two or three, probably two feet of fill down here. Yeah. Uh, nice storage bin back here. Corn cobs? Don't see anything. It looks like it's uh, well, you tell me what it is. I thought perhaps from my experience in New Mexico that it might have held like something like Turkey if there's such a hmm. precedent for something like that. You see this double thickness lower wall and then the single upper wall. From Mexico. Mexico, oh, and you chewed that some of that piece he cooked in the microwave? Yeah. How was it? Uh, very sweet. Thank you. That's a quid from a roasted agave. Um, well, there... Whoa, now that's interesting. Mm. Andy was wondering if this was a turkey pen or something. And Oh yeah. Talking about the pictograph. But um I don't know what that might be, but 
there are down at at some sites as you're probably familiar these turkey pens with just little bends mm -hmm. two you know two feet wide mm -hmm. here's that quid if um i'm going to throw this quid back somewhere where it's not going to be quite so visible to every passerby acorns and more pictographs, these red stripes, vertical stripes along there. Boy, this isn't going to be here for long, I don't think. seem to be considerably more artistic than the people on the ground floor. <laughs> That's those artists in the wall. <laughs> God, that somebody could come in here and write their names right over those petroglyphs. Not that, you know, not that the whole town didn't do the same thing on archaic petroglyphs, but maybe it's just a human nature kind of thing. Do you want to spray can? bashful if I see doing something inappropriate to talk to them. Well, a little less, I mean, I was considerably more bashful with those guys out at Cerro Prieto. Way. Chief. You know, what does that mean? You don't like your neighbors anymore? <laughs> or your, your relatives moved out and somebody else's relatives moved in? Rich's pot rest on the post. Is this going to focus or not? Ah, there we go. I think this roof deck has collapsed in here.
Andy, would you come here a second? And Jamie too, if you are interested. Third ruin, we were just in that room. And it's a room block of probably about 10, 12, 15 rooms, two stories. Um, nice doorways. This wall's about to collapse, it looks like. I guess there were two room, two front room block with one, two, three, four, five, six, perhaps eight rooms in front, probably eight rooms in back. Possibly a third floor, can't really tell yet. We were just in with the collapsed roof deck. Big beam, and here's a what I think might be a 50-year-old pot hunting hole with the debris thrown out. Now here's, this is interesting, you have roof beams here and then another row of sockets and see how all the, the mud of the first two levels, I mean the, the mud of the upper level and the lower level seems consistent and then you have that different colored mud I wonder if that was a rebuild of a floor or something. Provide you some dead air space too between the floor and the ceiling. I know it seems it'd be very difficult to go back in there and plug in a another set of sockets, but it's weird to have that double roof deck in the well here's one thing. See that the mud here, much of it is the same color as the mud there. And this plaster is a different color from that plaster. Weird. Boy, that's really ready to go, isn't it? So to the lintel area in the room we were just in. And then once the lintel goes, the two sides fall out. You know, I wonder if this is the same... Is this a double... Set of you know, roof floor in there. Oh, 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 oh! I see what's going on. It, I this is plaster, and that's the roof mud. See how this mud is is the the light color, and then that's the warm color. You see the little triangle space. I haven't looked in there yet now. The east end of the, the second major ruin on this side of the canyon. We've come back. Um, this is an area of a room block with which has been crunched by a rock fall. But this rock in here is kind of a flaking grade, something or other, that greenish gray. You can see some good chunks that would, are good potential lithics materials, like this one. And we're now going here, you can see there's a lot of fill here. This doorway is only about two feet above the present surface so we're standing on the walls of another room there's um another room that is filled up